make just one big choir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, in choirs, we gotta rock, y'all ready to rock? Let's go. Oh, that's nice. Say it again. giving honor and praises to my Heavenly Father, the true and living God, to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, and my teacher and keeper, the Holy Ghost. I thank my pastor for giving me this opportunity, and I praise God for all of you who are here and have tuned in to receive a word from the Lord. He has given me a word that I believe will be beneficial to all of us on this day. Pray with me and for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come again just praising you. Father, we magnify you and glorify your name. Father, we ask that you speak your word on today. Father, that you set me down, move me out of the way, and just use me for your glory. And Father, I ask that this word bless each and every person that hears it on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. The message for this day and this hour is Christian hope with freedom in Christ. Our scripture comes from Psalm 131, 3. Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. Galatians 5, 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. This is the only place our hope and freedom can be and should be. As just a reminder that this night is more relevant or just as relevant as it was in 1862, both in the natural and in our spiritual living today. Many in the younger generation may not have a full understanding of the history and the importance of it all. I want to take us back in time for just a few moments when there was another time for hope and freedom when a particular group of people were waiting for this great event to take place. Many, would have, many were of Christian belief and faith. It was December 31st, 1862, 161 years ago, when African Americans had hope and held a watch night. This night also carried another meaning. Instead of just being New Year's Eve, it was called Freedom's Eve. Over 161 years ago, on this particular December 31st, slaves, many of our ancestors in the Southern Confederate States were gathered in churches, private homes, and other places waiting to hear news about the Emancipation Proclamation that would become effective on January 1, 1863, giving them freedom. They stayed awake all night, watching their night turning into a new day. There was people in the North also gathered watching and waiting. This document, the Emancipation Proclamation, stands equal to the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution. Lincoln's words made it clear that we as a people, our people, were now free. Here is just a short part of these words that on the first day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1,863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then thenceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military, and naval authority thereof will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them in any efforts they make for their actual freedom. That the executive will on the first day of January aforesaid by proclamation 
designate the states and parts of states of any in which the people thereof respectively shall then be in rebellion against the United States and the fact that any state or the people thereof shall on that day be in good faith represented in the Congress of the United States by members chosen thereto at elections wherein a majority of the qualified voters of such state shall have participated shall in the absence of strong countervailing testimony be deemed conclusive evidence that such state and the people thereof are not then in rebellion against the United States. They need to reread that today because that does not seem to be what they're taking into effect today. When we look at what's going on in our Congress and when we look at what's going on in our Senate. So they need to go back and reread it. Those documents are critical and have a main uh, decision in working in the United States today. At many watch night services this day, these words are still being shared. Another earlier time in history was the early traditions of watch night services that began in 1733 by a group of Moravians in Germany. This was a small Christian denomination that was in what is currently the Czech Republic. John Wesley, founder of the Methodist Church, began this practice and made it part of the Methodist traditions. The first watch night in the United States was in Philadelphia in 1770. During that time in history, they were held monthly. The Methodist Church changed the name from watch night to covenant renewal services. These services were to reflect on their spiritual readiness to meet God if they died. Watch night for African Americans in 1862 had a new and different meaning for those being freed from slavery by the Emancipation Proclamation document. Our watch night services today carry much or should have some of the old traditions, but also a new hope. Our Christian hope and freedom in Jesus come with a new tradition of watching, waiting, and longing. Mark 13, 33 tells us to take ye heed, watch, and pray, for you know not what, when the time is. For the Son of Man is as man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore. For you know not when the master of the house cometh, or even or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Matthew 24, 42a, therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Matthew 25, 13a, therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Our Christian hope comes with our waiting. Psalm 27, 14 tells us to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Our Christian hope comes with a longing. My soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in your word. Our Christian hope can also rest in Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his right hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice. This psalm brings to mind the writing of the hymn, O Come, All Ye Faithful. When you sing it or hear it, perhaps it will be with a new understanding of the hope and freedom we have in Jesus. O oh, come, all ye faithful, all you faithful, joyful and triumphant. 
O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem, come and behold him, born the king of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. 161 years ago, their hope and freedom was built on the Emancipation Proclamation, which became effective January 1, 1863. But what is your hope and freedom built on? Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth a move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you, whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Covet not this world's vain riches that so rap rapidly decay. Seek to gain the heavenly treasures. They will never pass away. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. What is your hope and freedom built on? Today, our hope and freedom should be built on the return of Christ and his second coming. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, this is your opportunity. You have a brand new year coming, 2024. Stretch out, reach out to him. Use this watch night service as that time to extend and become committed to Jesus.